Hello, hi, how's it going? I'm making a video today on the concept of vertex uh, buffer objects and vertex array objects, how they're similar, how they're different. This video might be a little simple. However, when I was learning this stuff, I found that it took me a few days to get my head around it. So figured I'd make a video on it. Times have changed. We are no longer living in the 1990s. Um, computer graphics are no longer limited by our graphics card. The limitation is probably, among many things, our CPU and the speed of our CPU bus as it talks to other peripherals like our graphics card. So let's say we're making an object in a computer game. We have a bunch of data like position, color, texture, coordinate, normal vector. In my work, I work with a little bit more. I also add uh, tangent and bitangent, for instance but that's fine. Um, the economical way to work with this data is just to load all of the data for every single point together in one big flat dumb array that's called a vertex. So we can see here kind of a visual representation of what this looks like. We have all the information for our first point all smashed together, then all the information for our second point all smashed together. And then we call a routine to send that information to the graphics card during the creation of the object and then it exists on the graphics card and we have draw functions which work with the existing thing. Problem is our graphics card does not know our graphics card does not know uh, what each of these numbers mean. Um, for our shader we might have what we call attributes or locations. Um, for instance, the position might be location 0, the color might be location 1. That could be all mixed up. So to start with, we have a concept called stride. And this is saying, how many bytes is it from one um, point to the next point? So let's say we have the x value for the first point. We're saying, how many bytes do we have to stride along the buffer to get to the next x point? And it doesn't matter, right? So if we go from the first R value and take a stride of the same amount, then we'll get to the next R value. The stride is, should be the same for every single thing. So here we can see that there are 11 numbers which describe um, each of our vertices. So 11 times 4 is 44 bytes. Our stride is 44 in this case. Um, then Another thing we want to know is for each attribute, where does that start? What's the starting offset in bytes? So if we look at um, location, location starts at position zero. It's the first number on the vertex. So zero times four is zero bytes. Um, and then we look at uh, color. Okay, so color starts with the R here, which is at position three. So three times four is 12 bytes. It's the offset for the start of R and so on for the texture coordinates s and t start at 24 bytes and the normal vector starts at 32 bytes so there we have it the really big concept here is that just the buffer by itself the boring dumb data is stored in what's called a vertex buffer object um, and we could just work with that and then define our attributes at every single um, draw frame. However, we have another thing called a vertex array object, which stores not only the buffer object, but also the attribute descriptions so, so that the graphics card remembers how to draw them. Okay, so let's jump in and have a look at this in practice. Okay, so here we are. Um, in a project, nothing too crazy here. This is just to demonstrate the whole buffer concept. So um, the way I want to store my uh, values is I want to put the three positions for the uh, three values for the position, two values for the texture coordinate and three values for the normal vector. And these are just flatly kind of written out in one big array. Okay. So how do we store this in the graphics card? Well, um, first of all, we get a vertex array object. We're gonna generate one of them and store the reference here. And we bind it to make it active. Now, the important thing is that we need to have this vertex array object bound before we bind our vertex buffer object. So just to be on the same, that, um, by the way, that is the way 
that the vertex array object remembers the buffer, attaches the buffer. So just to be safe, I like to make sure I bind the vertex array object even before I create the vertex buffer object. I mean, life's too short to be debugging this sort of stuff. So just to be safe. Okay, then I create my vertex buffer object and I bind it as the current buffer that I'm operating on. And then I send, so this GL buffer data loads in that big array. Uh, we pass in a reference to the array that we're loading and we specify how many bytes we're loading in. Now there are fancy ways to do this. This is a nice easy way, easy way that gets it done. Then that's all well and good. We need to create or enable our uh, attributes. So if we check the shader, we have location zero. So attribute zero is the position. Attribute one is the texture coordinate and attribute two is the normal. So luckily this all lines up. Doesn't have to, we could do it the other way. It's fine. Um, so the first number here is the index of the attribute which we are talking about. The next number is the number of um, numbers, number of floats, which is associated with the attribute and the format. Yes, we are looking at floats. Uh, false. I believe that may be a... Yeah, I believe that is some sort of compatibility thing. Um, the next, so this needs to be set to false for legacy reasons of some sort. Um, next number here is the stride. So let's double check this here. If we have three for position plus two for texture, that's five plus three for normal. That is eight floating point numbers, four bytes each. So eight times four is 32 bytes. So we are taking a 32 byte stride between each number and uh, between each vertex. And then we need to put in the starting positions. Now, this is a bit of a funny thing. It needs to be kind of a it needs to be kind of a void pointer thing. This is purely just a Python to C library compatibility thing. So it needs to be a void pointer that goes to the number, you know, 0, 12, or 20, respectively. And the way we do that is we go into the C types library, and there's this function called C void P, which creates a void pointer. Now a void pointer is a pure memory location, but for now, just think of it as this is what we need to do to get the Python code working with the OpenGL code, which backend is in C or something like that. And it doesn't change every time. It's always the same thing. It's annoying, that's the way it is. Anyway, so that's it. I just wanted to go through this concept um, because it took me at least two days thinking about it to wrap my head around this, the difference between those. Um, and being a Python developer, one of the downsides to that was I was kind of sheltered from reality a little bit when it came to these, this whole bytes thing. But anyway, that's it. Hope you had fun and see you later. Bye.